This video with Alex from the Angular team has been doing the rounds recently, which focuses on the central idea of you shouldn't use effects, which might seem like surprising advice coming from the people who just released effect as part of their core signals implementation. You should definitely go watch that video, uh, it's great and I mostly agree with everything Alex says in the video. To be fair, Alex is brilliant, so if I did disagree you should probably weight his opinion over mine anyway. But I thought I could offer a slightly different perspective on how to think about effects and why not to use them that might be helpful for some people. Especially for the people who have watched my content or others in the past that often focuses on declarative code and why you shouldn't generally subscribe to observable streams. The perspective is that subscribe is basically the same thing as effect, at least in terms of what it does to the reactive or declarative flow of data in the application. A subscribe is a way to react to some value changing, take a copy of that value out of the reactive mechanism it was in, and perform some imperative action with it. That value is now no longer in a reactive mechanism, unless the imperative action was to put it into another reactive mechanism this is often not the best idea. I could repeat that section again word for word, but replace subscribe with effect and it would still be true. I'll link to some of my other videos on when it is okay to subscribe if you would like a bit of a deeper dive, but I'll give you the quick version here as well. And instead of referring to these things separately as subscribing and using an effect, I will just call it breaking reactivity. Generally, it is okay to break reactivity when the data has finished its journey in your application. Or perhaps put more plainly, things you have declared in your application are no longer interested in reacting to that data anymore. A great example of this is when we want to display something in the template. The template is sort of the endpoint or the destination or the sync for the data. So breaking reactivity here makes sense and is fine. Although in the case of the template, this would typically be done via some mechanism like the async pipe or to signal and Angular's interpolations. But technically, if for some reason we wanted to make an application without a framework and handle updating the DOM ourselves, it would be fine in this context to use subscribe or effect for the purpose of updating some DOM element. Another example is for stuff like post requests, where the data is leaving the application to go off to a server somewhere. Again, the data has reached the end of its journey along the reactivity highway. It's just taken the server off ramp instead of the template off ramp. Nothing in the app needs to react to that data anymore, so again, breaking reactivity makes sense. This is not necessarily the case if we want to react to the response from that request to the server. In this case, things in our app still do want to react to it, and so breaking reactivity might not be optimal. We might also want to trigger some side effect within the application itself, which is also fine. Maybe we want to trigger a dialog using some imperative API if some error state is set, or maybe we want to trigger a navigation back to the login page when the user's authentication state changes. Or maybe we want to play a little boop sound when a user scans a QR code. These are all side effects that do not impact the state of the application and are generally fine to handle in a subscribe or effect if you want. Where it often doesn't make sense to break reactivity is in the situation I mentioned before when I said, that value is now no longer in a reactive mechanism, unless the imperative action was to put it into another reactive mechanism. This is often not the best idea. What we generally want to avoid is using subscribe or effect to alter state in the application. Subscribing to a stream and nexting some other stream and creating an effect that sets a signal are equivalent examples of this. We are breaking reactivity to perform some imperative action and then triggering the start of some other reactive flow. To continue the highway example, this is sort of like taking an off ramp only to then get back onto the highway again. There might be situations where that does actually make sense, but in general it is better to try and reframe the problem so that you never have to get off the highway in the first place. The most basic example of this is that instead of breaking reactivity to set some value imperatively, we can instead derive that value declaratively. Now there has been no need to break reactivity. Of course, situations get much more complicated than this, and it might not always be so easy to figure out how to go about it. A declarative mindset is not easy to develop, but a declarative mindset does make it easier to develop. And then in some situations, maybe you have considered the trade-offs and you really do want to break the rules for some specific purpose. Go the imperative route and write that subscribe or effect. 
This is something I've done for the bare bones Redux style state management with RxJS and signals I've been recommending. It includes explicitly breaking reactivity with subscribes, which acts as the bridge to get these values into the signals reactive system. We are breaking reactivity to connect one reactive system with another one. In this specific case, I think the isolated downsides, somewhat less declarative code, can often be worth the upsides, a simpler mental model for state management that requires less advanced RxJS usage. And also in the implementation of Signal Slice, there are some subscribes behind the scenes that do a similar thing, breaking and restarting reactivity for the purpose of providing a cleaner and more declarative experience when actually using the utility. We just hide the ugly stuff behind the scenes. So there are always considerations, there are always trade-offs, it always depends, but in general, perhaps a decent phrasing would be almost never use subscribe or effect to modify state in your application. And if you're interested in learning more about a declarative approach to building modern Angular applications, you might find my Angular course interesting, which you will find in the description. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you back here for the next video.